I'd like to welcome you all here today for the 97th anniversary of the burning of the Customs House. I would also like to thank Sean Hogan, the Customs House staff, for letting us hold the commemoration here today and for the hospitalities. I'd also like to thank Mark from the Dublin Fire Brigade, who was a piper here for today. The first wreath, which is for the IRA men who fought and died here today, will be laid by Marie and Liam, who are the granddaughter and son of Anthony Flynn. Anthony was a member of A. Kai in 2nd Battalion. He also drove the truck to the Customs House containing the materials needed to burn the building. In fact, you could really say it was all his fault. So if you want anyone to blame, there you go. <laughs> we know. According to Illig, Phyllis Manor of the Scales of Old Day, I'll keep me the fortune of it. Relatives, friends, you're all welcome on this auspicious occasion to commemorate the 97th anniversary of the historic event known as the burning of the Custom House. I'm honoured to be asked to lay the commemorative reed, honouring the volunteers of the Dublin Brigade of the old IRA who took part in the encounter, now part of Irish history. I've been honoured because I'm a son of one of those gallant young men who deliberately devoted their youth to the cause of Irish freedom. Here too are four of the surviving children of Tony Flynn, who is my father. They took an active role in the desperate bid to achieve the aim, being aware of the immediate dangers. Incidentally, I regret the absence of my twin brother, Sean, who died recently. He was an enthusiastic contributor to this occasion. I speak with pride, as I'm sure all of you related to these men would be. They deserve if not command our memory. On this very date, May 25, 1921, just five years after the 1916 Easter Rising, while the British government was threatening horrible war in Ireland, unless a treaty was signed, then about a hundred men at short notice were called into action. They attacked and ransacked the very building in front of which we stand. The purpose was to destroy the administration capability of the authority, and this they accomplished. Though the aim was achieved, it was not without a price. Five of their comrades died in action on this very site. Dear Lo Igoni. The names of all those who took part and inscribed on a scroll inside this monument to be remembered and commemorated for future generations. Incidentally, this monument was sculpted by Breton freedom fighter Jan Reynard Goulet. Their deeds, when filtered through history, will signify an important contribution to a vital stage in the pursuit of a united Ireland. Just an aside, as a point of interest, this Custom House action was insisted on by Eamon de Valera, the Commandant of Poland's Smith's garrison in Easter Week. And in 1931, he established the national daily newspaper, the Irish Press. 
This is just about 200 yards from here across the Liffey, River Liffey. And proudly, I can say I worked there as a journalist for 40 years. On this day, let us pay our tribute to these young brave patriots who fought in honourable cause. Our lives and history do rhyme. Good of Mila Mahwib, they go Ella Igenguera. Now I introduce you to Mila. Thank you to my uncle Liam for that great speech. I'm sure Liam's twin brother, my uncle Sean, is proudly looking down on us all. Thanks also to Gary Deering for all his hard work and for asking us to lay the wreath in remembrance of the five IRA volunteers who lost their lives. It's a great honour to be part of this commemoration with you all here today on this 97th anniversary along with maybe 15, 16 members of my family. I'd like to recite a short verse from a poem written by Michael Davitt called Inish Foyle. Michael Davitt was a founder, member of the Land League. He wrote this poem whilst imprisoned as an Irish Republican in an English jail. My grandfather, Tony, favored this poem and he wrote the words of the final verse in one of the autograph books shared by the men of the Dublin Brigade during their incarceration in Kilmainham Jail. It's currently on display as part of the exhibition in the jail's museum. As a family, we are incredibly proud that Tony's inscriptions, along with those of his fellow comrades, have become such an important and informative part of our Irish history. I feel the words of this poem embody the spirit of the men who fought so bravely for the cause of Irish freedom. Here beneath the tyrant's hand by martyr's blood we swear, to freedom and to fatherland we still allegiance bear. Nor felon's fate, nor English hate, nor hellish fashion jail shall stay this hand to wield a brand one day for Inish Foyle. The second wreath, which is for the four civilians who died, will be laid by Des White. Des has been our main researcher for the last couple of years on our website and has written most of the articles there and he has helped numerous relatives unlock the secrets of the past. Come on Des, it's your turn. The card you can learn is Queen Lynn Freshen anew where Cather Shevetic, a full boss and not shot, shot this local blino in. We also pay our respects today to the four civilians who died here in 1921. The Dubliners John Bourne and James Connolly lived in this neighbourhood. They were in the wrong place at the wrong time, just when they were going home uh, from work to have their lunch. The other two men who died actually worked here. Mahan Lawless was originally from Cork and he was a temporary clerk with the local government board. He was mistaken for a rebel in the building. Francis Davis, the housekeeper, was, according to his wife and his widow, an Englishman and a unionist who said he'd never put up his hands to uh, a rebel. He tried to resist the attackers. All four men are buried, buried far from this spot, only two of them with headstones. However, this great commemoration group has rescued their names from obscurity. And we've even met two relatives, or relatives of two of the men over the last two years here who've laid wreaths for them. Maybe a fitting legacy would be a small plaque to their memory in a small quiet corner on this famous spot. Just as a little reminder that in wars, it's not only soldiers that lose their lives. May they all rest in peace 
Before I call for one minute silence, I'd just like to take this opportunity to express our deepest sympathies to the families of Donald Galligan, Tom Flood Jr. and Sean Flynn, all of whom have attended the commemoration in the past. May they rest in peace. Now we're going to have one minute silence for them, for the men who fought and the people who died here. Before we go back into, into the building as we do every year, I'd just like you all to gather up in the steps as we do every year for the group photo. Are you ready? Get up in here.